Hello guys and welcome to Sonic Origins. This is a collection of the first four-ish mainline Sonic games. Uh, it collects Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic the Hedgehog CD, and Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, which is technically two games, but also one game at the same time. I'll get to it when we inevitably when we uh, get around to that game. Uh, this uh, game adds new cutscenes to each game, which is what you saw uh, at the very beginning there, the animated cutscene. Obviously, that wasn't on the original Sega Genesis. Uh, they did put, um, in my opinion, a good bit of effort into the collection here. Anyways, uh, if you collect 50 rings, which is basically like the currency for uh, this game, there will be a giant ring at the end of each act, which is the name for levels. Uh, and that will lead you to a special stage. Now in here you could collect one of the six Chaos Emeralds. Uh, it might sound... I don't know if I have to explain too many Sonic uh, series main... I don't know how much of Sonic the Hedgehog I have to explain, like... Because it's a pretty huge franchise, I'm pretty sure it's one of the biggest gaming franchises in the world. But yeah, Chaos Emeralds are basically these, uh, these emeralds, obviously, uh, that give you a bunch of... That give you a bunch of power. The main villain of this game, uh, Dr. Eggman, he is after the emeralds because he wants to build, like, a giant city called Eggman Land. And so we have to stop him because we're Sonic the Hedgehog and we're super environment friendly. Uh, and so that's very, very much like the theme for these games is it's the environment versus, you know, like big city industrialists. I mention this in every single Sonic LP I do, but you know what? Might as well mention it here. The main villain of this series, Dr. Eggman, actually has two names. Uh, Eggman is his original Japanese name, but in the U.S. releases for the original games, he was renamed to Dr. Evo Robotnik. I think both both names are equally silly. Uh, maybe Robotnik sounds a bit cooler, but I'm fine with either one, honestly. Although in the Origins re-release that I'm playing right now, pr pretty much every official source refers to him as Eggman. It's another one of those things where it's like a localization change made in the 90s because, I don't know, big studios didn't realize that Americans would like, that Americans would enjoy things made in Japan. Um, this was the around the era that we got the Persona 1 localization and... Gosh, there's something else that I that I always think of whenever I think of bad, like, crappy localizations. We got stuff like, um, you know, when four kids would dub over anime, we have a lot of infamous examples of that, like, uh, jelly-filled donuts from Pokemon. But anyways, I'll just refer to him as Eggman, maybe sometimes I'll refer to him as Robotnik. Doesn't really matter, you know who I'm talking about. Anyways, this uh, level that I'm playing through, or this zone rather, uh, is very iconic but also infamous. It's iconic because, you know, it's the first level of the first game, and it's really fun to play through. But it is also, um, also here's our first boss fight against the Egg Wrecker. Um, it's also infamous because whenever... Sega wants to make a callback to a previous game. It's always to this level specifically. It's happened so many times. Thankfully, you know, in more recent years, they've started referencing more obscure things. Uh, but this level has become very infamous in a way. Anyways, we just beat the first zone. Sweet. So, of course, in the original games, because they were made in, made in the 90s, uh, they were in a 4x3 aspect ratio, but in 
uh, the Origins re-release, all of the games have been changed to 16x9, which is the current standard for games. And yes, that is ev And yes, all of the games in this package are, uh, are changed to 16x9, so that's technically one thing that this uh, compilation has over uh, Mario 3D All-Stars. A lot of people seem to dislike uh, Sonic Origins, um, because occasionally there is something where it's like, oh, that's a bit of a weird change, or... But, like, 99% of the time, it's just the old games repackaged with slight changes. Such as, if you'll look down in the bottom left corner, you'll see that I have 999 coins. Now, in the original game, uh, it, it had a lives system where you have three lives, you can gain more, and then if you fall down to zero and you die, then you get a game over and you have to restart at the beginning of the game. That's very much an older thing that games don't really do anymore because, you know, this was back when um, they really wanted their games to last long, but, you know, they were on these cartridges that didn't have much space on them, so they couldn't really add too much content into these games. So instead what they did was they just made a lot of short levels, made them quite hard, and gave you a live system where you had to start over if you failed. Thankfully, this collection gets rid of that. I, I know some people do prefer to have the uh, live system, uh, but I don't know, I think that's just adding challenge where it's unnecessary. What coins do- ah, oh, crap. I'll go ahead and get to show it off now. What coins do is if you fail in a special stage, you could go ahead and retry by spending one coin. Now you might be asking, hey, TGN, how the hell do you have 999 coins? Well, 998 now. That's because it carries... That's because coins carry over for, like, new games and stuff like that, and... If you want to 100% Sonic Origins, you need to do a bunch of bonus challenges. Op oh, crap. And those bonus challenges all give you coins, and so it's very easy to grind up 999 coins. And so now I don't really have to worry about special stages. Although at the rate I'm going with this, I'm completely failing at this, so maybe I do need to worry a bit. Uh, each Sonic game has a different special stage. Um... Crap! Oh god, why am I struggling so much at this? I think it's just because I'm focusing on commentary. Each Sonic game has a different special stage. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of these ones. I mean, they're not the worst. Uh, the worst special stages is in the next game we're gonna be playing. But I don't know, just not too big a fan of these. I think Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 have much more enjoyable special stages. Alright, I'm gonna actually focus and see if I can get this emerald. Might I say, I, you've probably already noticed if you have eyes, but these special stages are very weird looking. Like, the spinning in the foreground is already, like, super weird, but then the backgrounds are super trippy with, like, the birds turning into fish and stuff like that. There, finally! Okay, I'm sorry that took so long. I'll speed that up in post so you guys don't have to worry about that. But yeah, we're already halfway uh, finished with the Chaos Emeralds. The Chaos em Emeralds determine whether or not you get the good ending. Uh, it's not too crazy of a change between the good and bad ending, whereas other games in the series will, like, give you an extra level, um, and give you some bonus stuff to reward you for, you know, getting all of the optional side stuff. This game, it just kind of gives you a slightly different ending. I will be going for all of the good endings in these games, but I won't be too sad if I miss out on the good and bad endings in... Uh, Sonic 1 and Sonic CD. Sonic 2 and 3, I definitely will be uh, getting the getting the good endings in those games because, you know, the Chaos Emeralds change a lot more than just what ending you get. 
So, one thing that the Origins Collection has added is is two moves that are uh, pretty iconic in the uh, Sonic move set. Uh, first of all, the spin dash. Hold down and then hold the A button, or whatever the equivalent for that is for you. I'm playing on a PlayStation controller, so it's the X button, or cross button, if you want to be technical. But everyone calls it the X button. But yeah, it's a very iconic move. It's been around since Sonic 2, and... Uh, yeah, I'm glad they added it, added it in. Another move I'm very glad they added in is a move from Sonic Mania. It's called the Drop Dash. What you want to do is, uh, while you're in midair, so, like, maybe during a jump, hold down A. You will then burst off at a very quick, uh, at, a, at very high speeds. Um, of course, this wasn't in the original games. Like I just mentioned, it was from Sonic Mania. And... Once you get used to how it works, it's very useful for zipping around stages. The way that Sonic games are designed is they always- is you're supposed to, like, play through the games multiple times and figure out, like, you know, get- get a full grasp of the physics systems and, like, find ways to quickly shave off seconds in levels and find new alternate and fun ways to go through levels. I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't like Sonic Heroes as much. I, I still haven't, like, fully finished that game. Um, I got pretty darn close, though. Uh, is that no matter how long I played the game, the controls always felt weird and janky. And I didn't really feel like there were many places where I could shave off seconds in levels or any cool alternate routes I could take. Um, of course, no disrespect to anyone who who likes uh, Sonic Heroes. It's just that game's not for me. All right, Chaos Emerald number four. Here we come. This one should be a bit easier, uh, considering it's a bit more linear, whereas the open one is uh, was a lot more tough because I was constantly bouncing around alongside the walls. Uh, you'll notice that there are arrows, uh, like, some of the rings in this stage will, like, form in the shape of arrows. And if you follow those, you'll find the correct path to the Chaos Emerald. Also, uh, you'll see the, the little circles with the letter R in them. If you, if you have Sonic touch those, uh, then the entire stage will start turning in the opposite direction. Also, if you kick ass at a special stage, then you'll get three additional coins, so it's even e an even easier way to get through that. Okay, I believe on either Act 2 of this game or in Act 3, there's this glitch you can do with a platform like this where you, st at least in the original game, I don't know if it's still possible in Origins, where if you, like, stand on the edge of the platform and you, like, clip through the wall here, you can skip to, like, the very end of the level. It's really cool. I suggest you check out uh, speedruns for these games, because they're always, like, super crazy. I saw a joke in a comment section one time that a speedrun of a Sonic game is just a normal playthrough. Um, which, that's not entirely wrong. This is, this is like, a speedrunner's game. It even has, like, a timer in the... Well, of, of course, like, games before this had a timer, but for... Ma for Mario games, uh, it was always counting down, like you had 500 in-game seconds, and it was always counting down, and if it got to zero, you died. For this, it's always counting up, kind of like at a race or something like that, or if you're like doing track and field and you're trying to find your best possible time. Um, so, you know, when you get to the end of the level, you see how long it took you, and then next time you play through that level, you can see how long that playthrough took you and compare your times and stuff like that, and, you know, race against your friends and see how fast they do it. In fact, I believe, because of some, like, technicality with uh, the goal posts and stuff like that in this game, uh, speedrunners shoot... Speedrunners uh, use the in-game clock as their timer for uh, all of these different levels, and they just add up the times. They add up all of those times at the end of the uh, at the end of the run, which I think is super cool. This game, 
wanted to be a speed game and it succeeded. I believe the original, like, intentions for this game was that people, the people who programmed this, uh, played through Mario Brothers 1, but whenever you start up the game again, you have to restart from the first ever level, and they just, every time they had to try to quickly speed through each level and beat them as fast as possible until they actually got those, the new content. So they decided to make a platformer where the point is to try to go as fast as possible, which again, super cool. Uh, speaking of which, on some of the ruins in these levels, there seems to be, uh, like right here, there's a face on those ruins and those always looked like Mario to me. And I know to a lot of other people it also looked like Mario. Anyways, now we're moving on to the second boss fight, the Egg Scorcher. Yes, all of uh, Dr. Eggman's uh, inventions and stuff like that have the word egg in them. I mean, I don't expect him to be the best at naming when his entire, like, evil scheme is to create a city called Eggman Land. He may have 300 IQ, but... None of those IQ points are being used in, I don't know, proper naming schemes. Alright, now we're done with Marble Zone. Um, so there's a concept for all of you... Um, for any fans of the Ace Attorney series or the Danganronpa series in, uh, who are watching this, there's a term you might know called Third Case Syndrome, um, where basically, for some reason, pretty much every single time in those games, the third case is always, like, absolutely awful. Like, for the Ace Attorney games, they might have uh, really bad characters and really like stupid murder plots. Um, and same goes for Danganronpa, like really bad murder plots. And you know, the killer is also, you know, either not that interesting or annoying or stupid. Uh, so, the so my, my point with all this is that uh, the Sonic games might have something similar, at least in my opinion. Uh, Instead, I'll call it Second Zone Syndrome, where, for some reason, like, every, every single time in these games, the first zone is always really, really cool, and then the second zone sucks. Uh, there's one exception that I can think of, um, and Sonic 3, because the second zone in that game is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, in Sonic 1... Uh, and Sonic CD and Sonic 2, to a certain extent. The second levels always kind of suck. I mean, I like Chemical Plant Zone from Sonic 2, and we'll get around to that level uh, when we get to that. But that was always, like, when I was a kid and I played through Sonic 2, I'd always, like, continuously die at Chemical Plant Zone and then just stop playing. In fact, the Sonic Origins collection was the first time I ever beat Sonic 2 without using cheats. Like, every single time before that I would use, like, the uh, level select code or something like that just to get to back to whatever level I was on or to skip to the next level. But because I don't have to worry about lives, I can play through all the way through. I kinda suck at old video games, but that's fine. Oh, jeez, I don't know what happened there. There we go. We're in now. Alright, that's Chaos Emerald number 5. Only one more to go after this. So something that's really strange about this zone is that... Uh, at the very beginning of Act 1, and I think at some other point throughout this zone, 
uh, in big letters in the background, it just says COPE. Which is very strange. I don't know what the point of that was, if there's some meaning that I'm not getting there, or if... I don't know, maybe the game devs were just messing around, who knows. See, they also have words like, uh, CPU that show up, and I'm like, what's the point of this? Is it just to seem weird and high techy? I'll... I'll talk about this later, and I talk about this every single time I Let's Play a Sonic game. But the music is so good, man. Just... Every single track in this game is... Awesome. Except for, like, maybe one. But yeah, the Sonic franchise is known for having just absolutely incredible music. I've re-listened to so many... Uh... uh vo I've, li I've re-listened to so many songs from... Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic Adventure 2, and Heroes, like, a bajillion times. Even though I don't like Heroes, um, I still think the music in that game is awesome. And that just goes to show, just, even if you don't end up liking a Sonic game, you can usually expect that the music will kick ass. Alright, we're on to the final special stage. Uh, we're also about, like, nearly halfway through the game already. Yeah. The six, the classic Sonic games are pretty short, um, especially when you've played through them already and you can get through the levels in one try without dying. I'm very interested in seeing when I'm gonna die, like when my first death is gonna be. Even the special stage's music is absolutely incredible. Even though th the gameplay is infuriating, I can't help but, like, just sit back and casually listen to this music. Also, yes, Sonic got them all. I'm pretty sure the colors of the Chaos Emeralds are always inconsistent between Sonic games. Uh, next time we start collecting Chaos Emeralds in one of the later games, I'll... Be sure to point out if there are any inconsistencies. Alright, Act 3. Now that we don't really need to worry about gathering rings to get to special stages, I can play a bit more recklessly. Doesn't mean I just want to keep getting hit over and over, but... You know, I just don't have to panic about it as much. So, a bit of well-known uh, trivia about Sonic is that his first ever appearance wasn't in uh, Sonic 1. It was actually in some arcade uh, racing game. I believe it was called Rad Mobile, which is such a 90s title. Uh, really kind of encompasses the way that uh, Sonic's uh, character is treated in the U.S. Speaking of the way Sonic's character is treated in the U.S., I... Um, want to bring something up real quick about, like, the U.S. and Sonic the Hedgehog. I mentioned before how, uh, how there are occasional, like, localization oddities where, you know, uh, like with Egg Dr. Eggman's name, how they changed it to Robotnik. But in the West... They gave Sonic an entirely different backstory than what he had in Japan, and an entirely different personality, too. Um, because in the US, he was given, like, this cool, spunky, like, uh, like, attitude, where it doesn't really take anything seriously. Also, it said cope again. Uh, he doesn't really take anything seriously, and it just embodies, like, 90s hooligans and stuff like that. Um, but in like the Japanese version, he's a he's a lot more like I don't know if serious is the right word, but you know he's a lot more. Th oh, by the way, 
Uh, here's the next boss, the Egg Stinger. I looked away from the screen at the worst possible time. Uh, he'll bounce back and forth, um, and then after a little while, after he hits the edge of the screen, he'll, uh, he'll drop down with his Stinger, just walk out of the way, and then jump to attack him. And we beat him. Nice. Uh, but yeah, back to what I was saying about localization. Uh, he's a lot more, like, serious and, you know, a bit more kind-hearted in the Japanese version. Um, and that's not even, like, beginning to scratch the surface of weird stuff that uh, the U.S. did for localization, but I am going to leave discussions about that until the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, I'll continue what I was going on about, and we're going to enter the dreaded labyrinth zone. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!